Good evening. The University of Pennsylvania recently released a study to determine the top five things to keep your average college student from killing themselves. Number five, free money from the government that you don't have to pay back. Number four, greasy food at 3 a.m. Number three, and this is in all caps, boobs. Number two, alcoholic beverages that you don't have to pay for. And the number one thing to keep your average college student from ending it all is... Are you an everyday nerd? Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next episode. Yo, welcome to your Everyday Nerd, the show where we promote staying alive. And if you're an average college student, there's nothing better than 2001's Nintendo GameCube Magnum Opus, Super Smash Bros. Melee. I'm your host, Zack Snyder, and today's Monday Nostalgia. Happy Monday. If you're new around here, on Mondays we talk about all the things that exude nostalgia. And if there's one thing that gives me a huge helping of nostalgia, it's Super Smash Bros. Melee. With the release of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate this month, I wanted to take a look back at the most popular entry in the series, which also just so happens to be the first one that I ever played. See, I didn't even know about the Smash Bros. series until the end of middle school. I didn't grow up with a Nintendo 64, and it wasn't until my best friend in 8th grade had given me a GameCube with a couple of games, one of those games being Smash Bros. Melee. By the way, shout out to Caffeine Dragon on YouTube, it's really awesome that we've been able to remain friends for 11 years. I'm old. I specifically remember the day that he gave me Melee because I was in the car on the way back home and I was flipping through the manual and I was just amazed that such a game could exist. I mean, are you really telling me that I can play as Mario and beat the shit out of Donkey Kong for stealing my girlfriend all those years ago? Because if so, count me in. Now, when I was younger, my video game time was pretty limited. So at first, I spent most of my time with this game reading the manual. I mean, for a manual, this is probably my favorite manual. And I know, like, that's extremely nerdy. But what did you expect? It's called Your Everyday Nerd. I love this manual because it really got me hyped for the game. And when I got the opportunity to actually play Melee, like... This was the first game that really thrusted me into the world of video games, like hardcore. It was Melee that introduced me to Ness, piquing my interest at the character, and a few years later, I would be playing Earthbound, one of my favorite games of all time. This was a time before I had played Ocarina of Time, so I was confused how Zelda and Sheik were the same person. Then there's Marth and Roy, which would be my first introduction to the Fire Emblem series. And I can't forget about Mr. Game & Watch, which was the character that would introduce me to the beginning of Nintendo's vast history, which would give me the idea to create a series about Nintendo's history, pushing me into making YouTube videos in the first place, and then abandoning said series. But who knows, maybe I'll be able to get back into that someday. Overall, Melee was a fun game, and I played it for hours on end, but it was the characters, the stages, the music, all of which would bring me a new love for video games and its massive impact on pop culture. So as I play the newest entry in the franchise, Ultimate, I wanted to go back and check out Melee again, because it's been five years since I've touched this game and seven years since I've really played it. The only other Smash game that I've played recently is Smash for Wii U, which I've played for the last three years, but I know that Melee is different. And so, I'm really interested in seeing how I feel about this game so many years later. While I'm not a big fighting game fan, I just never have been, Smash Bros brings something new to the table that I really appreciate, and that's its solo content. Whether I'm playing with friends or playing by myself, I'm sure to have a fun time. The adventure mode was by far my favorite part of Melee. You pick a character and have a solo experience for about 20 to 30 minutes, depending on how good you are. It includes 12 main stages, with each showcasing platforming levels and traditional fighting stages. One minute you're finding the Triforce in an underground stage, and the next minute you're escaping Planet Zebes under a timer. It was an extremely creative way to showcase so many of the new Nintendo characters and their main stages. I do really like that there is a slight variation on the mode, depending on which difficulty you choose. If you choose hard mode or higher, you get to fight Giga Bowser, which is super dope. Playing back on adventure mode, though, I do have a slight problem with it. 
While Brawl's Subspace Emissary was a sprawling story mode, and Ultimate Spirits mode has dozens of unique battles on a world map, Adventure mode is pretty much the exact same thing over and over again, the only difference being which character you play as. As a kid with only a handful of games to play, this was fine, but as an adult with a backlog that's embarrassingly massive, it's just boring. It's nice to play back on once and reminisce on how much I enjoyed it, but this isn't a mode that I'm gonna play a lot over and over again now, especially since future games in the series have a much better solo story mode experience. Adventure mode is really only worth playing once, unless you really love melee and want to 100% it. The next main solo experience is classic mode, and I really like classic mode. I didn't play much of it when I was younger, but if I was to play more melee right now, I'd play more classic mode than anything else. Unlike adventure mode, classic mode offers a somewhat different experience for each character you play as. There's 11 stages, each offering a different battle or bonus stage. I really like the target test, which you can actually play on its own. It offers a unique, different target test for each individual character, pushing you to use all of their abilities to break a bunch of targets. I also really like Race to the Finish, an obstacle course that has a time limit. The farther you go, the more points you get, so it's a really neat risk versus reward mechanic. And one of the best parts and hardest parts about Classic Mode is the boss fight at the end against Master Hand, a giant hovering glove that, again, is really not that easy. And if you're playing on normal mode or hard and you get to the final stage within five and a half minutes, then his compadre Crazy Hand will join the battle. And <laughs> let's just say that gets a little more difficult. The real advantage of playing and beating classic mode with every single character is that it gives you the opportunity to unlock most of the unlockable characters in Melee. When it comes to characters, Melee does a great job of one-upping its predecessor. We got the returning 12 veterans with 14 newcomers. Some of these are great like Peach, Ganondorf, Mewtwo, and Marth, and some of these are just questionable like Dr. Mario and Ice Climbers. I mean, I'm glad we're getting NES representation, Ice Climbers is trash. What's nice about the newcomers is that we do get representation from all eras of Nintendo's history. While future Smash Bros games would give us video game representation outside of Nintendo, this was a very solid introduction to important Nintendo characters that was necessary for the franchise to evolve. There's also a total of 29 stages, with some of them being super iconic like Temple, Fountain of Dreams, and Onnit. And this covers a lot of what Melee has to offer, but it is just the surface. On top of Classic Mode and Adventure Mode, we also get All-Star Mode, where you get to fight every character back to back in a test of skill. Event matches are also pretty fun, offering 50 unique challenges, each having a certain theme to them. I never did really like home run contests where you get to beat the shit out of a punching bag and throw it across the field, but there's also multi-man melee where you're tasked to defeat 10, 100, or an endless amount of wireframe enemies. Of course, many people play Smash for its multiplayer aspect, but since I didn't play a lot of Smash multiplayer until college, and since Melee still has a thriving community of tournament play around it, there's not much I can say other than I guess this game is still good enough to be played for all these years. One of the things that Melee did really well was its rewards. Unlocking characters and stages for the most part was fun, but one of my favorite extra bonuses for the game had to be its trophies. Even after unlocking everything else, you still had something to work towards. And that something was 290 3D collectible trophies, each showcasing bits of video game history. In many ways, trophies were early adopted achievements with an actual reward attached to them. Many of these were unlocked after doing a specific task, and that made it worth even more collecting them. However, this does mean that there is an in-game lottery, which is more frustrating than anything. Especially considering once you've unlocked a majority of the trophies, you then have to grind for a bunch of in-game coins to play the lottery and hope that you've gotten a new trophy. It's an extremely monotonous and time-wasting grind, just like the actual lottery. And finally, this brings me to the actual gameplay. I mean, we've talked about everything the game has to offer, but what about how it feels to play it? Smash Bros. in general is a fun franchise, with each character offering a different way to play. But I will say that when it comes to playing Melee, it definitely feels more rigid than its future sequels. 
This means that it took me a lot to revert back to the controls that felt fairly different than Smash 4 or Ultimate. Also, I'm really used to using the right control stick to do quick attacks, but Melee doesn't allow that. Not to mention, certain characters have had extensive upgrades to them over the year. So if you really want to go back and play Melee for nostalgia's sakes, I don't know if I'd say it's quite worth it. See, that's the problem with franchises like this that grow over the years. If you're playing a fighting game, or a racing game, or even a sports game, as these companies evolve and create better and better gaming experiences, it's rough to go back and play past entries. I can play Breath of the Wild today and then pick up Ocarina of Time tomorrow because while yes, Breath of the Wild is an objectively better game, Ocarina of Time is still a very different gameplay experience with a different story and arguably a different link. But playing Smash Ultimate now, or even Smash 4, or even Smash Brawl, it's very clear that each entry in the franchise completely improves on the previous title. So when it comes to Melee, I don't think it holds up to my nostalgia. I think it's a very important game, both to the industry and my personal life, but I have no reason to play it now. It takes more time and effort to set up my GameCube than it does my Switch especially considering that I can play my Switch in handheld mode now. Loading times are much longer on the GameCube, and there's way more content in future Smash titles. So unless Melee is the only Smash game you have access to, which is why it's been a staple to poor college students all these years, I would recommend just getting the newest Smash game instead, because you're gonna have fun either way, but Smash Ultimate, and even Smash for Wii U, gives you way more options in the long run. Oh no, I pissed off the Melee fanboys. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Final Destination, no items, top tiers only. Final Destination, no items, top tiers only. Final Destination, no items, top tier only. Whew. I think I'm good now. That's all the time we have for today. If you liked the video, go ahead and hit that like button. If you disliked it for whatever reason that may be, you can, you can hit the dislike button too. Uh, go ahead and subscribe for more Your Everyday Nerd, and I will see you in the next episode where we're talking about Smash Bros. Ultimate, because, just a good ass game. Goodbye.